Now comes 1C. Now, 1C is pretty interesting. I have my students in my FE electrical program who are itching to take the P power exam. They're like, Wasim, if only I could skip FE electrical and jump to P power, I, I can tell you that I, I, I would basically, you know, I would, I would have no issue in preparing for a P power. Why? Because on my day to day job, I live and breathe NEC, right? So codes and standards is a big subsection. Actually, it is compatible to some of the sections. So it's one of the biggest subsections in the entire specification, not the biggest section, but subsection, okay? And of this, uh, we as power systems engineers, those of who, who those of us who practice or have practiced in the past, right? You guys know that NEC is what you deal with most of the time followed by NFPA 70E right? And you see only those of us who are in utilities have exposure to it. And those of us who work in petrochemicals or around chemicals um, process industry would once and would, would might, you guys might get involved with area classification, right? So during our on-demand, uh, in the on-demand course and during our live training, most of our emphasis was on NEC followed by NFP70E. And then we did NESC and the hazardous area classification. Right now, this is one extreme where somebody who is working with the codes and standards day in, day out. The other group is uh, mostly internationally trained engineers. Right. These are the guys who are guys and girls who are coming to the U.S. Uh, or who have arrived in the U.S. recently who have never encountered uh, codes and standards um, and the, the NFPA standards. Right. Uh, they might have been using some other standards. Okay, so but NEC terminology is actually quite different the way and there's a day and night difference between NESC and NEC, not necessarily in the scope or well, the scope is obviously different, but also in the way the standards are written and the way they communicate, right? NESC is an IEEE ANSI standard, right? Their approach is that if you're talking about grounding, they're going to stuff everything that needs to be known or that needs to be explained or needs to be implemented for grounding in that grounding section. That's their approach. Whereas NEC has standalone articles and a lot of cross-referencing, right? So you got to get used to that, okay? Um, so uh, there's a question over here. Uh, that was going to be one of my questions. Should they mention the code book NEC in a... Well, you look at the NEC sample exam, in most of in pretty much all the problems related to codes and standards, Standards, they've explicitly co called out the code, right? So they say, according to NESC, solve this problem according to NESC and NFP 70 and so on and so forth, right? So I think I, I think if you use the sample exam as a reference, so because there are some scope problems that are some some topics that are sort of covered in multiple sections, right? Because of the overlap, yes. So I do expect, and the sample exam does show that they explicitly reference that. Okay. So with that preamble, with that background, with that stage, uh, let us wait. Okay. Let's take this question. If you know the answer without looking it up, should we answer it? So uh, that can happen. Okay, um, because especially for those of you who work with NEC on a daily basis, my recommendation is that if you know something top of your head and you have a reference to validate against, I would take extra minute, two minutes, three minutes to do that because this is not FE electrical, right? This is PE power, okay? You are not in a race against time. Most of you are not. And on average, my students complete the exam with one hour to spare, right? Uh, sometimes two hours to spare, sometimes even three hours to spare. So don't rush it. And yeah, I wouldn't risk it, okay? Uh, I don't rely on my memory as much, okay? I rely on problem solving skills, on making the connections and strategizing about how to basically solve a problem, all right? So, but I know like some of you, like last, in the last session, I had a couple of students uh, who had done master's electrician, uh, who are master electricians on top of being electrical engineers, right? And those of you who've gone through my program, I think the name came comes to my mind, Sean, right? And we had very detailed, engaging discussions because Sean could essentially do all the NEC problems in his sleep, right? But still, since you, if it was FE electrical, I would say leverage that because you have three minutes per question. But in this case, I don't see the need. So just go ahead and reference just for peace of mind, okay? All right, so how are we going to rate NEC, guys? What do you think? After having gone through eight lectures, I believe, from the on-demand course, eight or nine lectures, two sessions, detailed sessions, most of which were about three and a half hours long, both of them, NEC, right? Um, 
are we com are feeling comfortable with NEC? Okay, yeah. So easy to medium, medium to hard, medium, medium. Let's just call it medium. There's work that needs to be done here. Um, you need to sort of review the layout. Uh, need to be comfortable with how things are spelled out, right? So let's call it medium. How about NFP 70E? It's a very tiny standard compared to NEC at least, right? It's very focused, right? R flash, shock hazard, and this and that. So let's call it easy. NESC, although it is very overwhelming, humongous 800 plus pages right but the approach that we are taking is that it's prescriptive right so because it's written by triple e they tell you exactly what needs to be done there might be some calculations but for all practical purposes we don't worry about that correct okay so it's going to be easy and the hazardous area classification standards i just call them hazardous area classification standards 497499930b yeah, for the most part, they're easy, right? Or at least we know exactly where we have to go and, you know, get the information. So taking a step back, those of you who learned NEC for the first time with me, hopefully, you know, your zero baseline is at least close to average or above average, right? Or you're feeling more comfortable navigating through NEC and then uh, will be able to deal with it. Okay. And those of you who are already experts, it was probably just a quick refresher for you in the context of the PPOW exam. NFP 70E, a uh, very interesting standard. One of the standard that has, you know, uh, penetrated the actual industry the most. Okay. And it just keeps on becoming more and more stringent. And we did talk about the fact that if you are good with art flash, and that is one of the areas where you know, there are opportunities for entrepreneurship as well and setting up consultancy and th things like that. <laughs>